Every month, I enjoy looking at the complex coronary cases. They're broadcast live from Mount Sinai. They're carried on CardioSource, and then they're archived there for a review later. They are terrific for learning some of the complexities of uh, interventional cardiology. And so I'm really honored to be standing here next to Dr. Saman Sharma, MD, who is the Director of uh, Clinical and Interventional Cardiology there at Mount Sinai. And I've got to, first off, thank you very much. I have learned a lot from watching that program. And now we're talking about atherectomy. This is something I remember when I was much younger, I remember covering atherectomy, but it appears to be back. What's its place at the present time? Yeah, um, actually, you know, the atherectomy, clearly, that removing the plaque. Uh, we have many types of atherectomy which came and disappeared. One of them was transluminal extraction atherectomy. That was basically removing the thrombus. Exactly. No good. Then was the directional coronary atherectomy, DCA, that disappeared. The one only state is the rotational atherectomy, and that is to take care of the calcific tough plaques because we have no other technique. Recently, now we have orbital atherectomy added on as of last uh, September. But before that, for 20 years, we had no other device except rotational atherectomy to take care of the heavily calcific lesions, which will not open up with a balloon angioplasty or even cutting balloon and flex dome. So you needed to use this device, which is rotational atherectomy, to take care of these complex calcific blockages. Now we know how many calcific blockages there are from a variety of different sources. We also know that atherectomy isn't being used as, as, as often as we find those, uh, those blockages. Why not? Why are we not using atherectomy in the situation where it is clearly beneficial? That's a very good point. The two, one is the incidence. As you mentioned, the moderate to heavy calcium is present in almost one third, 25, 30 percent of cases. If you take That's even not heavy, how often it's used. exactly. Even if you take heavy calcium, it's present in 10 to 12 percent. Now, but we know also that rotational atherectomy is present is used in less than two percent. So therefore, a what big is happening? Big gap. Now, you say why? One of the reasons was the rotational atherectomy technique is very complex. It requires a steep learning curve and it can be associated with complications, particularly slow flow and perforation, if not done correctly. So people, many of them who use the rotational atherectomy, had their complications, they went down, they stopped using it because of the complexity. And therefore, the region, there is a discordant in terms of incidence and presence of calcium, and the atherectomy use is big because of these two regions that yes, atherectomy is present, and, but many of those cases now are sent for surgery. But more importantly, that rotational atherectomy used in a small percentage. But in other technique people use, which is a high-pressure balloon dilatation, using another wire, which we call a kind of a, the anchor wire and the side-by-side -side wire and then balloon dilatation, that really crack um, the you know, buddy wire technique. And the, basically what it does is that you take a high-pressure balloon, and that wire which is in the vessel, it really pushes it against the uh, plaque and maybe cuts it. Some cases we use those cutting balloon and flex stone. Idea is that to open that, score the plaque. But many of those calcific cases, they're still not done. And those are the, then are sent to the centers like us. And that is where our rotation atherectomy use is about 10 to 12%. And, uh, or they're sent for bypass surgery. Some interventional cardiologists seem to be surprised when they see the extent of the calcification. And so they weren't ready for it. Then they think, do I have to go get the atherectomy and go through all of that? Is there any way to, to understand up front that you're, you could have a problem and make sure the atherectomy is handy? Yeah, I think that's a very good point. The key is in this uh, manuscript, which we are coming, uh, will be published in Jack Intervention next month, we really go through those steps which you exactly highlighted. That is, that if you have a mild calcium, and we are saying that you don't need to be fancy IVAS or OCT to find calcium, just by angiogram. If you're mild to moderate calcium, you do your business as usual, or try to open with a high pressure balloon. But if you have heavy calcium, do not make a mistake of just doing a balloon angioplasty, because otherwise you'll get into the trouble that artery balloon does not open, or sometimes even cause more perforation, because you have to go to very high pressure, and then you cannot deliver the stent. Even you brought the stent, you cannot expand the stent. So the purpose of this, uh, the manuscript was to really put place uh, rotation atherectomy in its right context that in those small percent of cases, whether it's a 5% or 10%, definitely not 2%, that use the device and if you don't have it, don't tackle those lesions. 
send it to someone who can take care of them well and know, knows how to do atherectomy. Well, just like what you do with the complex coronary cases live, you explain things very directly. And I think that will help the clinician by reading this particular paper in the Jack uh, Journal of Cardiology, Interventions. We hope so. It's a great topic, and as I said, I feel like I'm getting older because I, I've seen this whole thing. You, when you started here, you were, my, my career in cardiology was flashing before my eyes. I remember every one of those techniques and where they are now. This is the lead-off article, by the way, for Jack Interventions in the April 2014 issue. Look for the current status of rotational atherectomy, and it is the lead-off article for Cardiosource World News. I'm Rick McGuire. <laughs>